Hello and welcome, beautiful, vibrant souls, to this week's AstroCast. Um, this is going to be looking at the week ahead, so it's going to be covering the week of July 11th through July 17th, 2022. Um, I know I'm putting this out a little bit later than I normally would. I've been having some technical issues um, over the weekend, uh, so I do apologize, but we are here. We're making it happen. I'm so happy. Um, so I'm just going to give a quick little rundown of what astro casting is for the unfamiliar, the uninitiated, actually, which is a great segue into saying um, to wish you all a warm welcome to my friends who are back for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, oh my god, you guys, I can't talk, to my old friends who are coming back, and a warm hello and welcome to all my new friends who are here for the first time. So astro casting, as you see, we have this lovely circular board that is divided up into 12 equal segments, and these represent the 12 houses of the zodiac and their natural areas of rulership. Now, I do want to kind of make a little side note here, a, a tiny wee bit of a caveat, um, that these are covering the houses of the zodiac and like their natural areas of rulership, but this will, sorry, there's cat fur. I did my best. Um, this will impact everybody differently just based on your own personal astrology so your house placements planetary placements interplanetary aspects etc as well as the circumstances of your own life journey thus far so do keep that in mind as we go through all of the messages but we have the like i said 12 segments here to represent the houses of the zodiac their natural areas of rulership and what we do is we reach in for our little teeny tiny tarot cards like look at these little ladies on the three of cups oh goodness bless their teeny tiny little hearts um so we reach in and i blindly reach in and grab cards cast them onto the board and interpret the energies of the cards to, um, in the area of life that it corresponds to for wherever it lands um to kind of look at major overarching themes for the week ahead so i think that is just about everything that i wanted to go over when we can dive in and get started I hope you guys are having a phenomenal day whenever this finds you. Um, sorry, I'm trying to like talk and do this at the same time, but I also have my eyes closed, which is silly because like I shouldn't need them for this. I don't know why. Like you don't need your eyes open to be able to talk. Um, yeah, here we go. Okay. Woohoo. Um, so for those who are new here i do want to kind of make a quick mention um so when we have cards where the bottom of the card is facing the in the you know facing inward toward the center of the wheel this is very clearly upright if we have ones where it's it's on its side kind of like this i would sort of um i would sort of take this to be where the energy is in flux it's not like necessarily upright or reversed and if we have ones like this where the top of the card is very clearly pointing inward this is a reversal so um so let's just go through what we have. We have the Ten of Wands in the fourth house. So we have the sun bordering the fourth and fifth house. It's mostly in the fifth house. And I know it's kind of on its side, but I'm feeling called to read it upright. Um, so I do sort of want to put that. Yeah, I, I just felt called to read it like that. We have the King of Cups. Um, you know what? I'm feeling called to do this. So I'm going to put the sun in the fifth house and the King of Cups in the eighth house. Um, normally when they're kind of on the line, I'll read them for both, but Spirit's saying very directly, like, nope, put them in these houses. So the King of Cups reversed in the eighth house. We have, oh, this is, a, this is a little freebie card. I forget it's in there. Ah, um, okay. So that'll, that'll go over there. I feel like I do want to pull one for right there though. So I'm going to reach in and then it's going to be, whichever one comes out is, is the, the card that goes there. It is. Okay, it's this one. Oh, okay. That's nice. I like that. Um, so we have the King of Pentacles. That's bordering the fourth and the third and fourth house. And we have the Ace of Wands. That's on its side um, in mostly the first house with a little bit of the second. So this is what we've got going on. We have Leo energy here with the Sun. Um, we have Cancer Scorpio Pisces with the King of Cups. And Taurus Virgo Capricorn with the King of Pentacles. Um, okay, where do I wanna go with this? So here's what I wanna say first and foremost. We have two kings here, and then we have the sun energy in the fifth house. The fifth house can deal with romance. Um, so I don't know why I'm getting for the, <laughs> among many things, 
one of the first things I'm getting is that for some of you, you might um, have a situation where you have two people that you're trying to decide between. Um, and you're finally getting clarity on this situation this week. Um, and for others, this is also where you are getting over a King of Cups reverse kind of energy. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. Um, and you're kind of like, you're seeing the possibilities with a King of Pentacles. And these two might be related or those might be like unrelated things where you're like, okay, I'm kind of letting go of this old situation, person, relationship. And now I'm also kind of welcoming this new person in. But I don't know why that's the first thing I was getting. Um, in terms of people, like I said, we actually have, you know, water energy, um, earth energy, but the, the different types of people here, if these are two different people, the King of Pentacles is somebody who is very grounded, very reliable, um, very down to earth, very, um, I keep wanting to say relax. That's not normally a word that I would, I would, you know, <laughs> that's not the name tag I'd put in the King of Pentacles, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling it here. Um, but somebody who's very like down to earth, very go with the flow, very like, you know, they, they know what they want, but they're not it's like they're, they're very grounded in what they want, but they're not a dick about it pretty much is kind of the energy that I'm getting. Um, this could be somebody who, you know, bordering the third and fourth house, somebody that you, um, that you kind of like you have in your neighborhood. So this could be somebody who lives in like, I'm getting almost your apartment building um, or like really close nearby. Like I said, they're in your neighborhood. This could be potentially somebody that you work with. I'm not really super getting that that super like you know strongly uh this also could be a family friend um and this could be somebody who reaches out to you with the third house who reaches out to you over social media in some way shape or form or maybe you know um like this could be a thing where if you're invited to like a barbecue or something you meet this person there and you end up like you know um following each other on social media or adding each other something like that um but this person also i feel like this person is very comforting right with the fourth house here um this person would be very very comforting this person like i said could be like um you know know your family or it's like um they're you know part of your friend's family it's somebody who because the fourth house deals with home and family and emotional foundation so not only could you know this person through any of those kind of outlets but this is also somebody who i feel like is just um creates a lot of like nurturing and support for you and it's it's not always something that they say outright like that they express with their words um but just through their actions they keep showing up they're very consistent um and like very yeah relaxed harmonious um yeah i i really like that actually quite a lot quite a lot um this also could be somebody who's very very mature they're very good with their their finances they're very good with their material realm they're just like they they've got their stuff together i'm almost getting to that this person is like very simple right not, not like simple like that but like they like to lead a life of simplicity that's a better way of putting it um so they like to lead a life of simplicity and as a result it's like they would rather you know they don't like um they're you know they're not like fearful with their money but they're also not like going to go needlessly spending um and so they like they like to live a life of, you know, like I said, simplicity. Um, this way, it's like okay, I you know I have what I need. I have everything that I could possibly need all taken care of, and the rest I kind of you know save for a rainy day or I put toward more meaningful things. So this person's got a really good balance where they don't hold on and like hoard things. They don't you know they're not like stashing their money away like little squirrels. Um, but they they also don't like frivolously spend it i'm also getting emotional like compulsive buying they don't do that um i don't know why like that's what's coming through but they're just they're very they're very grounded in all all types of ways um this person could have an earth sign moon as well as something i'm getting um but yeah so for those of you where this is like you're choosing between two people um that's one person now the other person with the king of cups reverse this is somebody who's very who's like either got a lot of feelings or makes you feel a lot of feelings. And this is in the eighth house as well, um, which is normally Scorpio's house. So this is like really ringing true. This is somebody who I feel like helped you strip away the layers, um, you know, pretty considerably. Things in our eighth house can kind of talk about like really deep soul contracts and karmic contracts where we, we really have to deal with them. We can't get away from it until we've resolved it. Um, so this person, 
may have helped you kind of get through a lot of those types of uh, like really stripping away the layers and helping facilitate and support an ego death that needed to happen. Um, but I'm almost getting with the King of Cups reversed. This person is not very grounded emotionally. Um, and you may or may not know this about them, but this person's like, they have a hard time getting a handle on their emotions. They have a hard time feeling like they're on solid ground. And this is why having this be in the eighth house, this connection was likely meant to like trigger up a lot of different things. Um, because it's like a like you guys are mirroring each other and like reflecting things at each other and this person really helped draw out and elicit some things so like looking at what's in your eighth house might help tip you off to what this might look like in your own life but this person really helped you like draw out and like um elicited some things that needed to be dealt with and i feel as if these have been healed um these could have been inner child kind of wounds with this fourth house energy showing up the fifth house as well um but i feel like this person and we also have you know this ace of wands in the first house um which is kind of you know this is the house of the self this is like you know the beginning of the zodiac this is our rebirth essentially um excuse my burp so I do feel like, you know, this is somebody who you likely also had a lot of emotional intensity with, a lot of emotional ties with. So there might kind of be this confusion or there may have been this confusion about like, is this person, you know, because the eighth house is like very intimate mergers. Um, this is also the house that deals with uh, shared investment. So as a result, it deals with marriage. I think it's really interesting. We have something in the fifth house, so romance, and then we have eighth house marriage, but there's nothing in the seventh house. Um, and it's, you know, the eighth house is about many things. It just happens to be one of them. I feel like you have this very deep soul contract with this person. That's why it's like, are we meant to be together? Are we meant to get back together? Are we supposed to work this out? Because I feel like with the King of Cups reverse, there's something where you just could never quite get things grounded with this person, which is very, very, very different than this person. Um, but it's like you couldn't really quite land it. I don't know why that's the the word they're using, but it would just like never fully ground, right? So there would be moments where it could like there's a lot of deep emotion. And I do feel like there's a lot of deep love. Um but it seems like either this person or the way that the connection was set up um this person I'm hearing was not a safe bet for investing your emotions. Um but the biggest thing is they're lacking consistency. They're very they're very yeah, ungrounded, inconsistent. Um, and so I do feel like if this is a romance situation where you're either choosing between two people or you're in this transitional period of kind of letting this person go and maybe a new person comes into your life, um, it's going to be a night and day kind of contrast. And since this is looking at the week ahead, you might be meeting this person this week or you're communicating with them more. Maybe you've met them recently um, and you're talking to them more this week. But this is where it's like, there is finally understanding on um like what you're looking for on what would make you happy with that sun energy um you know the sun is the most positive card in the tarot so it's like there's this this epiphany this understanding but it's a very very positive one or this understanding of like what you need to be happy um because we have this little this little dude here and he is naked as all get out and nakedness always implies vulnerability we have the horse which is um a symbol of freedom so it's like what you need to be happy and feel free in your own skin right and being yourself um and in being very open about who you are and knowing that that is very well supported so like maybe with this person there's a lot of emotional ups and downs but there's like uh you know it, it's like you may have held back a little bit either because this person was like hot and cold in and out inconsistent or like um, there were just like, you know, some major things that were blocking this situation from progressing. And I feel like that's kind of like where this sun energy may have been lacking, where it's like either there's a lot of, you know, heaviness. And we see this with the, the 10 of wands showing up as well. There could have been a lot of heaviness. Um, it was just hard to kind of shake that off essentially. Um, now <laughs> the romance, the romance situation aside, um, I do want to say with the King of Pentacles showing up, bordering the third and fourth house, for some of you, you've been dealing with an issue in the home, um, likely material or financial, that has just been like one thing after another after another with the Ten of Wands. And it's just like, all right, I just have to, you know, kind of like plow through it and deal with it and like, you know, get to the other side 
and it, you've been really, really trying to kind of keep your head above water, but it's been very challenging. It's been very frustrating. And you may have kind of been feeling like this was never going to go your way or this is always going to be really difficult. And I do feel like you're getting news with the third house energy here. You're getting news um, that's going to help you a lot, right? So if this was like um, with your home, this could be where you had like a lot of repairs that you had to deal with or you had a lot of like unexpected expenses and bills come up. Um, something that really threatened your stability, your well-being, or your financial well-being. Um, so it's like one thing after another after another. Or, you know, um, if you're trying to, you know, start a family or expand your family, it's like you may have just kind of hit obstacle after obstacle. Um, but I do feel like with this, you know, this third house energy, you're getting news this week. Um, whether this is like a you know, a digital communication or somebody, um, you know, you're meeting somebody in your your community or like your neighborhood that can help out with whatever it is that you're trying to do. So like, let's say if you have a lot of home repairs, but you're struggling to kind of like cover all of them financially, you might, you know, um, make friends with somebody in your neighborhood who, um, you know, who's kind of like a, like a handyman who like offers to help you for, for a discounted rate or in exchange for something else, right? Um, so it's like somebody who can help you in that way. Or if you, uh, you know, you're, let's say you're unexpectedly having another child and you're excited about it, but like, there's also some, some issues with how to make it work practically. This would be where like, um, maybe, you know, your neighbors, um, open up a daycare and you're like, oh, cool. I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to, you know, get more information about that. Um, and it's just like, things are kind of falling into your lap. You're getting news essentially this week that's going to help you sort the situation out and that's going to put you back in this place of feeling like you're in control um feeling like you're supported like there's stability in this situation so it's going to be a little bit of a sigh of relief and i really do like to see that because you've been struggling to get all of this um aligned for a while now for some with the sun in the fifth house this is beautiful we have leo energy in leo's house Mwah, gorgeous um, so what the sun in the fifth house can talk about, first of all, this is a, like the most, like I said, most positive card in the deck. So any fifth house matters, our creative, um, projects, our hobbies, our inspirations, which we see a little bit with this ace of wands as well, but our inspirations, you know, um, this is our inner child, our joy. This is also our romance, right? You know, the things we become incredibly passionate about, um, whatever it is, like, you know, maybe you're trying a new hobby this week. Um, and it just like sparks something in you and you're like, oh my God, I love this. Um, you could be, you know, going out um, on a date with somebody and it's just like sparks fly. You guys just get each other. Um, I'm almost getting the sense of like goofing around. Like you guys are like goofy together and it's really, really fun. You're like kids again when you hang out and it's like you really enjoy the time that you have with them. Um, and it's just really, really refreshing. Um, but I really like to see this. This is also where, you know, if you have um a hobby that you like to do a lot you're like really either enjoying it or maybe you're showing it to the public like you're you know let's say you have a creative hobby that you love you're showing your work to the public but there's something where it's like you're out in the sun right you're really embracing and enjoying your happiness and you're feeling very fulfilled by that so this is like a big yes um like a really big like positive um supportive energy toward your own happiness which is nice because we have this King of Cups reversed in the eighth house. This is a little bit heavy. Um, you know, like I said, the eighth house is a house of death and rebirth of trans transformation, um, transitions. Uh, this is also like deeply intimate mergers. I feel like for some of you, um, you've had a, you've, you've suffered a loss when it comes to your emotional well being. This could be the loss of a relationship because the King of Cups is a soulmate energy. Um, this could talk about, you know, the loss of a soulmate. It doesn't have to be romantic. Um, this also can talk about having gone through a particular period of, um, like, a, like an ego death when it comes to your emotions, right? So you might feel kind of like over the next week, um, because the king is reversed here, you might still be feeling kind of emotionally turbulent as you're sort of going through this adjustment period. And your team just kind of wants you to know, like, that's okay. That's normal to have periods of time where, like, emotionally things might not feel stable, might not feel grounded. You might be going through a lot of shifts and changes in your emotional landscape for the good and the bad. Um, so just like hang tight and know when it comes to anything with your emotions, you know, don't um, feel the need to act too quickly or, you know, be too hasty. Feel free to give things time to kind of settle down um, and, you know, 
sort of settle in a little bit but there is a little bit of like emotional restlessness upheaval or kind of like this you know um like a the churning is the word they're giving me so like this kind of that that sort of like having a hard time getting grounded that dizzying kind of energy um and this is actually kind of supported by this ace of wands um on its side mostly in the first house a little bit in the second um so for some of you this might also apply to like career your material well-being your finances um things like that your house um also with this fourth house energy yeah this could have to do with your house but mostly what the ace of wands is really talking about is that there is a new beginning that is forming and you might start to see it um kind of the word they're giving me is cresting like cresting over you know over the hill kind of a thing you might start to see it come into form this week um but because it's on its side that means the infer the the energy is in flux right um, so you might kind of see it start forming. You might sort of like start to feel differently, start to feel like there's a beginning on the horizon. You're kind of preparing yourself for that emotionally. You might be going through a little bit of an emotional purge over the next week, and this is preparing yourself for something new. And being in the first house, this could be a new, um, like a new physical routine for your, like for your physical body. Um, this is, you know, the house of the self as well. So this is like, you're kind of going through a mini rebirth for yourself. You're like stepping back into your power again, but I do feel like over the next week, it's still going to be relatively unsettled, like a little bit shaky, right? So if you've gone through some changes recently, or you have some major shifts in your life this week, um, it's for the better. It's heading in a good direction, but there still feels like there's something, um, a tad, uh, unstable about it or like lacking that groundedness so just keep that in mind and know that it's okay for things to take a little bit to kind of settle in so I think this is just about everything I'm seeing for the week ahead um, it has been an honor a joy and a delight to get to read for you guys um, I hope this next week ahead is beautiful and blessed for you and just like super happy super abundant I am wishing you guys the best the brightest most beautiful things that life has to offer take care love bugs Bye.